भाई क्लियर कर दो प्लीज सोनम जी आ जाएंगे मिल रहे हैं सोनम जी आइए मत ये धक्का मत दो भैया भी साइड भैया भी साइड साइड हो जा कैमरा साइड में ले आइए आ जाओ हो जाइए हो जाइए हो जाइए मैम सेंटर में सेंटर में मैम सर अरे गाना अरे भाई साइड भाई साइड हो लाइट मार रहे हैं आप लोग नाम ना बता नहीं लगे सोनम जी सोनम जी सोनम जी सोनम जी आते 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 एक सेकंड एक सेकंड अरे 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 पीछे थोड़ा थोड़ा आगे आगे थोड़ा आगे आगे ना थोड़ा कोई सेकंड बस 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 मैम लेफ्ट दे लेफ्ट मैम लेफ्ट दे अरे मेरे क्लास कर रहे अरे नहीं रे पापा सोनम जी लेफ्ट में लेफ्ट में सोनम जी आ रहे सोनम जी लेफ्ट में लेफ्ट में सोनम जी लेफ्ट में आपके मैम सेंटर चलो चलो थैंक्स 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 सोनम जी और मैम अरे चलो 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 और मैडम चलो चलो अंदर Unjan, so we go inside. चलो आपने अपने जगह पे जाओ बात 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 में में मैम जी सेंटर मिला हाँ नहीं नहीं मेरे को नहीं मिला एक मिनट एक मिनट वेट मैं भी मुझे नहीं मिला मैं जी इधर या आसिम देखना पीछे पीछे छात्री है सुतरु का बस पीछे वो देखो क्या है किरु के separate photo op we're just trying to get the launch rolling
Can we please have the production team ready for the range reveal? Guys, I would request all the photographers, videographers to please settle down. We will give you a chance for photo ops. Can we please have everyone settle in so we can launch the new range from Prega News, the expert pregnancy care partner. A reminder for the hashtag, it's hashtag Prega for you, hashtag expert pregnancy care partner. Don't forget to tag at Kidstop Press and add Prega News. Guys, can I please request everyone to settle down? Do you want to test if your mic's on? Can everybody hear me? Yep. Brilliant. All right. <laughs> okay, so um, Sonam, you've obviously done this like a zillion times. Uh, I don't know if I've done this a zillion times, <laughs> but I've done it enough. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm the nervous one. Huh? So I'm the nervous one. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. You Thank absolutely you, look you so gorgeous. Okay, um, everybody first up is very, very excited. Okay. You're literally doing this for the first time after... My, no, I did, uh, one, I've done one or two things, but I've just uh, moved back to Bombay uh, with my husband. Um, finally. Uh, finally, yeah. We, we were in London for a couple of years and um, we've decided to move back because uh, we want our child to be around his grandparents, both sides. Um, so yeah, I'm back in Mumbai and I'm back at work. That is definitely so. good news <laughs> for all of us. So that means we get to see you a lot more. Uh, now. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> all right. Um, so very quickly, sometimes before we receive the big good news of bringing the most, most uh, precious gift, can we please request the media to settle down? We cannot start like this. Sorry about that. Not at all. I'm sure you're used to it. <laughs> Sometimes before we receive the good news about bringing a child into this world, we have so many questions um, that run through our mind. What were yours? And, and, what did you, and how did you address them? So my husband and I got married uh, right before the pandemic. And we wanted to take two years uh, just to enjoy our married life and you know, just have a good time before we decided to, you know, we wanted to have a child. And I remember it was uh, February of 20, no, it was January of 2020, uh, New Year's. And we were like, okay, I think this is the year that we're going to try and have a child. And obviously, the pandemic happened and um, we got scared and uh, we just decided that we could wait till the pandemic was over, even though 
I, I don't know if everybody remembers at that time, we didn't know when or how, and it was quite scary, uh, especially the beginning of the pandemic. So it started settling down uh, by the end of the year, but then the second wave happened in India, which was again pretty scary. Um, and so again, we decided to delay it a little bit. Uh, we were seeing all sorts of scary things happening to uh, women and to you know older people and parents and children, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, with comorbidities, again we decided to wait. And um, then we said, okay, I think it's enough. Uh, let's try. And that's when. But in this time, I was doing a lot of research. I was reading a lot about fertility, about what are the right things to you know take, how to eat, the kind of lifestyle you need to lead. And I realized that I needed to, more than anything else, I needed to lead a very stress-free lifestyle. Um, and yes, and the supplements, and you know, sleeping on time, and eating right, and all of those things come in, and uh, they play a huge part as well. So I'm very happy that uh, Prega News is taking a more holistic and a full approach to uh, pregnancy. Right. I love how, as women, we're so accurate about the dates in our lives, no? Yes. We just know all the dates that things yeah. happen, like you mentioned, the New Year's that we decided. Um, do you think ovulation tracking is important? It's very important uh, because contrary to what we were told or we know from like I don't know, that it, you just can't get pregnant in every month of the, every day of the month. You know, there are some days where you're more fertile and, um, you know, and everybody's um, ovulation, I mean, a doctor will tell you this, but because as moms we know, because we've tried, you know, you try to get pregnant, everybody's ovulation date is different. So it's not the same day for everyone. Like everybody doesn't have a 30 day cycle or a 28 day cycle. I have a 32 day cycle. You know, some people have a 28 day cycle. Some people even go up to 35 days. And those five days when you're ovulating before and after the ovulation are those five days when you're the most fertile and an ovulation tracker is your best friend at that point because those are the five days where you are most likely to get pregnant. Right. So I did use an ovulation tracker with an app uh, to get pregnant. Uh, there was a, there was an app called, uh, uh, there was an, I don't remember the app right now, but there's a yeah. really good app that I had, which, you know, I would check my temperature, temperature and then pee on a stick to know, you know, am I ovulating or not ovulating? So yes, it was my best friend. Um, so I'm, I'm so glad that they're coming up with, um, they have these beautiful ovulation yeah. uh, trackers. Right. Um, you know, you mentioned about eating healthy, eating right, leading a more holistic life. Tell me, apart from the supplements of the obvious, which is iron, folic acid, how did, what were the other supplements that were important and how did you include it in your diet and meal plan? So honestly, um, I spoke to an amazing doctor called Dr. Gauri. And um, she is a Tamil, she's a Tamilian and she's from India, uh, but she lives in London right now and she used to be an OBGYN uh, with the NHS in the UK and she's as Indian as she, like when you meet her you think she's like the sweetest old Indian auntie who's giving you the best advice and, uh, but she's a brilliant, brilliant doctor. She was the first one to come up with water births in the UK, um, but she was a surgeon and she decided that, you know, we should have, like in India, we prefer natural births, but everywhere else in the world, they go straight away for a C-section. So she told me that, you know, we have to eat the Indian way, which is a full, like, you know, we have all these like new things where we're doing like high protein and this and that. She's like, you just have to eat a balanced anti-inflammatory diet, which is basically Indian khana, <laughs> which is, you know, roti, bhaji, dal, if you want to have, if you're non-vegetarian, then a chicken or a fish and dahi. And I just had a balanced meal and I was walking and I was doing a little bit of exercise and I was taking my supplements and just being simple and not going crazy on like crazy diets really helped my health and my, I had a 
great pregnancy. And uh, saw that. yeah, I had a, I had a great pregnancy. I put on a lot of weight, but I had a great pregnancy. And because I just kept it easy and simple and I wasn't eating sugar or like the gonke laddus and all of that, that your moms give you. I was just eating normal khana. Right. Um, the most magical moments, and I think if you ask any mother, what are the most magical moment of your life that kind of transforms you is when you see those two pink lines. What was that moment for you like? I think as soon as I delivered my baby um, and he was in my arms, I think it was one of the best things that I felt because you have this like euphoria as well, yeah. um, especially after you deliver. I had a natural birth, uh, mostly drug free as well. So it was a very, it was an amazing moment because my husband was next to me and my, um, my doctor was uh, my, one of my mom's close friends and I'd grown up with her. And so I just, just people who I loved were around me and then my parents were there and my sister was there and my in-laws were there and it was just the best, best moment of my life. I think it's life changing, right? When you right. have a child. Um, you know, you just mentioned that I put on a lot of weight. Yeah. <laughs> I have to ask you this because each one of us sees a different version of ourselves, right? Uh, you suddenly start feeling uncomfortable with that same body who yeah. has the ability to nurture and, you know, prepare for childbirth. You also had to play your part of being a Bollywood actor. You, and, you, know, you were part of so yeah. many covers. How was that experience to be part of all of these photo shoots, being constantly shots, shot, but not in your body that, you know, your older avatar. So I never, I, I, as soon as I de delivered my child, my main focus was taking care of him and then taking care of myself. Yeah. It wasn't, oh, I need to lose my weight in like two months or three months. I took, I've taken one whole year to lose all my weight. I did it slowly, I did it steadily. And I made sure that I was present. And a lot of moms go through postnatal depression. And you know, you feel like you're in somebody else's body. Um, once you deliver, you feel like your stomach is gonna go back in, but it's still there. And you feel, oh, my body's gonna look the same after I deliver my child. And then you realize your child is only like three and a half kgs and the, all the other weight is just you. <laughs> and, um, but I didn't, I didn't go on a crash diet. I didn't do any of those things because I used to be a very big girl um, in, in, when I was younger and through a lot, of, um, a lot of hard work, I have realized that you have to love yourself no matter what, no matter the stretch marks, no matter the weight fluctuations, no matter what, as long as you're healthy mentally and physically, that's all that matters and you will eventually feel like yourself and nobody should be in any rush to get anywhere. And um, you know, the media has a lot of um, good qualities and uh, so do a lot of actors. We have a lot of good qualities, but we also desperate to get back into shape and get back to work. And that puts a bad precedent for mothers who are not in the same profession as us. And I didn't want to set that example. I'm so glad that you so said that. So I made sure that I was seen through my way. Huge <laughs> round of applause for that one, guys. If if icons such as her start doing that, it really takes off the pressure. Yeah, and I was like, it doesn't matter. I will be photographed no matter what size I am uh, after my pregnancy. So I did a couple of events, and I didn't shy away from my size. I didn't shy away during my pregnancy when I gained that weight, and I gained that weight because. I don't know, some people gain their weight. I wasn't eating anything extra. So it's just, that some people don't gain any weight yeah. during pregnancy. They gain like six or seven kgs, are. but some people, my mom gained 25 kgs with each child. So. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick check here. Sonam, you mentioned you gained a lot of weight. How much weight did you gain? 36 kgs. 36? She, she beat me. How but many women was, gain? You did not gain 36 I and was, lose it. I was, I was 58. I was very, I was too thin before I got pregnant. I have a tendency to be too thin because my, it's genetic. So I, I was very thin. Right now I'm still like around eight, nine kgs more than. So 36 what, and you 36. did that. How many women here gained more than 20 kilos? 
Just, oh, almost okay. everyone. How many more than 30 kilos? Okay, tell me. How many, like at the right 12 to 15? Okay, I don't like you guys. You all are just very mean people. No, I mean, it's, it's I'm telling you, it's body Like, I don't know, I thought every time I was just breathing air and I was putting on weight. Yeah. Like, I was scared. The person I didn't want to meet was my OBGYN. I, I think, I think, as long, see, I didn't, have, I didn't have high blood pressure, I didn't get gestational diabetes, I didn't have preeclampsia, I didn't have any of those things. And I started off, I'm like almost 5'11", I started off very, very thin. So I just became, you know. Yeah, I, I think the key, guys, is to lose weight before. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if that's good as well. You just have to be healthy. Just be yeah, no, but I yeah. think, I think uh, I, I probably should say this, that no matter how much weight you put on, you will shed it all once the baby is out and you're running, not in the first year, but, but two, three years, you will definitely get rid of that because it's a hard job. So you take time. It takes, you, it takes one year to grow a child. Your whole body changes. Your organs have shifted. Your ribs have expanded. Your hips, your pelvic floor is expanded. If you, you'll take at least two years to get your body back yeah. to what it used to be. Right. Yeah. Tell me, Sonam, for someone who's always known as a style icon, um, embracing a newer version of you in a different shape, different size, being in a space where you're like, you know what, I don't want to rush into this, even though people look up to me. Um, how do you, how has your fashion evolved in this process? First of all, people make the worst maternity clothes. <laughs> I just want you to know. I feel like fashion needs to evolve where maternity clothes and bigger girls are concerned. There isn't literally anything that you can find in the market. Um, and so I was just like, I need to find regular clothes that I can wear as a pregnant lady. And I try to find clothes that would fit me when I was pregnant, which was impossible. But I found some. I, I did not, I, I bought some maternity jeans, but I just found everything else heinous. It was horrible. They'd like so ugly, some of the maternity clothes. You still clothes. managed to look really good. Thanks. <laughs> just those six pictures that you showed are those pictures that you can see. Those I put on social media. Otherwise, the rest of the time, I was in kaftans. I promise you. Uh, sure. We're going to play a quick rapid fire. You've got to answer these just in about a word. One thing that worried you about being pregnant? Before I got pregnant or during yeah. my pregnancy? Before. You know, like a few of my friends, I, I was 36 years old when I got pregnant. Um, so it's an advanced, preg advanced age pregnancy. Um, a few of my friends had gotten pregnant um, also at a similar age who were older than me. And they kept telling me about all these tests that they needed to take to, you know, check the health of the child, of the fetus, etc. And, you know, that anxiety was always there, right? You always have that anxiety every time you go for a checkup or a sonography or something. There's always anxiety. Is my baby okay? Is everything going to be okay? And I sort of started getting that anxiety from before I got pregnant, um, you know? And, yeah. uh, it's about the child. Yeah. How did tracking your ovulation make you feel? You know this? I mean, it's stress-free because you're not, you're not guessing when you're supposed to have sex, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it sort of takes out the romance for a short period of time, but then you get into it, you know, you make it happen, especially if you love your I love, husband. I love how honest <laughs> she is. <laughs> One thing you did to boost your immunity that you would recommend to all moms? I think folic acid, iron, all, all the, the supplements that you see has everything in it, you know? Um, I would suggest, is there omega in it as well? Yeah. Yeah, and so there's nothing that's not there in it. Right. So supplementing with a good balanced diet is what you need. And drink lots of water, always. One thing that came to your mind when you saw the two lines on the rapid detection kit? Well, I was quite excited. I remember it was Christmas. It was on 25th of December, I found out I was pregnant. It, my, it, was, uh, it was special. And uh, the weird thing was my husband had COVID at that time. <laughs> So we were sleeping in two separate rooms and, um, you know, I missed my period. I was like, I'm pregnant. He's like, great. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, are, we, we were literally on FaceTime in the same apartment. How, how 
uncanny is yeah, that right the biggest news of your life of your marriage and you want to like share it on face time the one thing that scared you when you went to the doctors don't tell me it was the weight no i i mean that was always like i remember <laughs> avan used to keep like saying like what is this sonam i was like i swear to god i'm eating exactly what you're telling me to eat i'm just gaining this weight i'm not cheating um it wasn't my weight though it wasn't that wasn't scary it was just you know i think as a first time mom everything just makes you nervous right, right. Yeah. yeah the question you googled most when you were pregnant how much weight are you supposed to put on <laughs> okay one health routine you would never skip um exercising i exercised through my pregnancy and um i did uh, pilates you know this is like an unless the doctor tells you you have to lay flat on your back you should walk and do pilates and weight training and you need to exercise be careful of yoga uh unless you know a yoga practitioner who knows maternity yoga uh because that can be a little dangerous but and to heavy weights like yeah. but just be active right one pregnancy symptom that you remember the most um i was nauseous for the first 3 months but i never threw up um so i never got any relief so i was just constantly nauseous which was horrendous because i'm like nauseous and you know you want to like you want to throw yeah. up but i couldn't throw up yeah um that was that wasn't great right one word that you would like to erase from your dictionary after motherhood one word uh, no i mean there isn't really any such okay. word i can't think of anything right now 9 right. months in or 9 months out the easier phase 9 months in guys <laughs> <laughs> how many people will agree 9 months in oh man who no. is better at changing diapers you or anand definitely me okay <laughs> who is better at putting the baby to sleep you or your partner me okay the first person i called to share the good news and now i know the answer it was uh, anand but no matter what the first thing my child said was dada <laughs> he did not say mama no matter what i was doing for that child <laughs> yeah yeah um played us to this father huh play dates or girls night out the easier ones to plan i think they're equally difficult because a lot of my friends are moms now and we all like to get into bed by like Ten. so like you cancel in on plans like okay guys i can't come in today or you're waiting for girls to cancel plans who else waits for their friends to say nahi hoga i just yeah. want everybody to know my child is just after a year started sleeping through the night okay so i had no night plans for i don't know how long okay last one yeah. baby monitor or shoot monitors the one you check more often now the baby monitor it's going to be a while till you give up on that one no i think the shoot ma the shoot monitor i never checked in the first place because i had an amazing team you know who takes care of me and i had the same team since i joined this film industry lovely so you know namrata who's done my makeup i don't know if she's here i don't know where she's gone um i have the, i've had literally the same 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 team so you Incredible. know they make me look fabulous and so i'm happy incredible we've had lots of questions coming in when we said that we're going to be doing this chat with you and um i'm going to request team kids stop press to head out to ask this question the first one is from thara gauda thara is from bangalore where are you thara <laughs> oh nice I, i like these little hooters why did i get one i'll do it for you <laughs> Hi Sonam you look Hi. lovely and I'm having so throat because of the party that I was in last night however I have a question for you what is that one funniest question you had for your gynecologist uh, when you went for your regular checkups even before you get conceived what was a like a funny question yes. you asked your gynec even before you conceived You know there's this weird thing where people tell you to put your legs up after you've had sex and they were like <laughs> and put the we have a huge round of applause for Sonam's honesty guys come on get those hooters I out now like, I was like is that she is like this is a urban myth <laughs> that you don't need to put your pillow under your butt <laughs> 
and I was like, okay, yeah, thank well you, done. Thank you, Sonam. Thank you. Uh, the next one is for Satrupa Sharma. Satrupa, where are you? Hi. Hi, Sonam. Hi. You're looking fabulous, first of all. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Saru, and uh, I'm a mommy of a seven-year-old who's got turning seven tomorrow, by the way. Oh, my God. A Virgo. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So, I wanted to ask, like, we moms are always bombarded with, you know, unsolicited advice yeah. from someone or the other, our well-wishers. Uh, so, what was the most unsolicited advice that you got, or, and how did you respond to it? You know, there's this um, thing in our Indian culture where when you give the first bite, you have to do this puja. And the Pandaji was like, you need to give this child honey. You know, they, they tell you to exactly. feed the child rice. And, and you're not supposed to do that for the first year. Like, whatever books that I've read says that in the first year, you cannot give your kid honey because it causes botulism, which is this yeah. disease that a child can get because honey has a specific bacteria. And I had this argument with the Panditji. I was like, I'm giving him papal puree, whether you like it or not, um, as the first bite. Um, so there are some old things that we do in our culture, which are not that's that, you know, which like in what we know, at least what I know is different. Like maybe a lot of moms have done it and their children are fine, but I, I was extra precautious. Exactly, and you get to hear that phase. Oh, we, it's like we haven't raised our babies. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Satrupa. Next question is from Ishna Batra. Hi. Hi, Sonam. Hi. I'm, I'm Ishna Batra. I'm a content creator and a mommy to two beautiful children. Congratulations. Turning, thank you. One who's turning nine day after. Wow. And uh, one is a four and a half year old. So many Virgo babies, huh? I know. Yeah. My, my son is a cusp, a Virgo Leo cusp. I don't, you, know, I don't know if that's scary or not. <laughs> oh, lovely. You know, uh, someone told me that if your baby's a Virgo, you're the luckiest mom because they really love their parents too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, true. Yeah. That is true. I, I, I get along with Virgos very well, so it's great. They, they are amazing people. Lovely. So getting on to the question, I want to ask you, how did you break the news to your family and friends uh, when, you were, when you got pregnant? So on FaceTime, because <laughs> oh, wow. uh, um, I called our parents together. On, uh, actually, my in-laws and my parents are really good friends. Lovely. So uh, like I said, it was on Christmas. It was Christmas and Anand and I were in London. And my, my in-laws and my parents had gone together on a holiday to Vana. Oh, wow. And uh, so they were on holiday together. Um, which is great, right? When your in-laws and your parents are such good friends that they Amazing. want to take holidays together. And so I called all, we called one person and we said, can, can you call, you know, the rest of, you know, my mother, I called my, I called my mother-in-law and she called my mom and my dad and my father-in-law and they were all sitting together wow. when we told them. And the only person who had tears in their eyes was my father. How Everybody sweet. else was like really excited. And I, he was the last person I would expect to get like emotional, but he was emotional about it. How sweet. And I think it went the other way around in my case when I got pregnant for the first time. I was so overwhelmed that I called my father and I started crying. Oh, <laughs> so it was amazing. just the opposite. Amazing. But I was amazing. just excited and happy. I know. It's just that overwhelming yeah. feel. Yeah. But thank nice. You. Thank you so much. No, thank, thank you. Thank you, Ishna. Yeah, um, can we have the question from Rituka Bisht? Rituka, where are you? Hello, Sonam. Hi. Hello, Mansi. Hi. So, um, my name is Rituka and I am a mommy of two beautiful kids and they are very naughty too. <laughs> As they should be. <laughs> I know. So, um, Sonam, uh, during pregnancy we go through, you know, different hormone change and we have a lot of different food cravings. So, I want to ask you, what were your food cravings like and how did you come to all of them? I just wanted roti with ghee on it, like what I used to have when I was young, like when, maybe the ghee made me put on weight, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I remember that, you know, when I used to go to school or when I was younger, when we used to have a khana, it used to be like just chapati with ghee and then all the vegetables used to come like on a plate. And I was just like, I just want that, my craving was for just ghar ka khana. Like, you know, like roti, like chapati with like ghee and like, 
it was very like tindora and like gobi alu and like it was really like i i don't know how to explain it it was very like ghar ka khana i wanted like maki dal and like turi wow. and all of this stuff like it was not fancy at all i didn't want like caviar or anything i just wanted like ghar ka khana mine was totally weird i used to had pickles with peanut butter and my husband was that's so he weird. was shocked he that's, was saying that sounds <laughs> awful <laughs> <laughs> thank you Sonam thank you Mansi <laughs> thank you can we have a question from Yuvika Abrol yes hi Sonam hi you look gorgeous oh thank you so much hi Mansi hi Sonam uh, with pregnancy come in a lot of hormonal changes and a lot of people also uh, realize this as they've been through this my question is similar to what Saru asked um what were what was the weirdest pregnancy advice that you got or you know the craziest or the funniest pregnancy advice that you got and from what age group you know as indians we have crazy ideas aisa khalo to bachcha waisa hoga wo pyo to taller shorter fairer darker so what was the weirdest advice that you thought um, doesn't work but you know you have to go through it you have to listen to that person because of course they are concerned you know honestly um you get a lot of you have very high progesterone like everybody knows when you get pregnant and you get a lot of pigmentation like i had a lot of pigmentation i had um pigmentation everywhere and weirdly even though i have i'm indian i don't i never had that issue where i had like dark patches and it was the first time i got it so i used to get like really weird advice from a lot of people on the creams that i sh- should use and i should do this and i should do that and you need to be so careful even with what you apply on your body like you need to be so so careful and fortunately um i i signed up with this brand that obviously i can't name here and i met the lady who had um started the brand and she kind of helped me understand the kind of skin care that i needed to do during uh, my pregnancy lovely the weirdest pregnancy advice that i got have coconut water the child will be fair <laughs> okay it's genetic but <laughs> of course <laughs> okay the next question that we have is from parul agarwal parul are you here hi sonam hi how are you very well how are you good you look beautiful oh, thank you so do you so does everybody everybody looks great <laughs> so hi myself parul agarwal and i'm a mommy of two kids one is 13 years and another one is 8 year so like as a parent we get lot of questions we get lot of parenting advice from the people some are really good and some are really you know baseless so my question to you is what is your best parenting advice that you have received the best parenting advice you would want to give what what i've received no that you would want to give what i'd want to give you know uh, when you're in an aircraft the when you're taking off right before you're taking off they give you a security briefing where they say put the oxygen on you first and then put it on the other put it on your child so the first thing you need to do is take care of yourself so you can be a better mom to take care of your child um love it love it so it's it's important to you know eat right you know be kind to yourself um you don't have to be like in india as women we are so, you know supposed to be we need to sacrifice sacrifice like that's what we've been that's what we've been told and we've been conditioned to think in that way and as a mom you want to do it right because that child and your husband and everything is just it's preconditioning but also that's your instinct as a mother but to do that even if you have to is you need to take care of yourself so you can be the best version of yourself for your child yeah thank you thank you parul and we have the last question from sonakshi singh sonakshi are you here hello i'm sonakshi i'm engineer and a blogger oh. i want to ask you one question so have you ever made a panic 4 am call to your mother and what was it about my mom So yes. I did the old Indian traditional thing. I went to my parents' house to have my baby. Okay. So I was with my parents for the first six months, and my husband 
very sweetly stayed with me the whole time. So I came to, uh, to my parents' house in the last two months of my pregnancy and I stayed the first six months with my parents. Okay, and, nice. um, and, you know, I think it was one of the best decisions I made because the comfort you feel in your mother's house is something that you don't feel in your own home, you yes, know. That, and uh, I'm, my, my mother is my best friend. I'm quite a, uh, I don't know how to explain, I'm a quite a geek. I think my mother is the coolest person in the world. So, yeah, I ask, I call her up, but my mother never has a phone on silent okay. because she That's wants really to make sure that her children can always be in touch with her. So, I can call her at any time and I know she will pick up the phone. Thank you for answering. Thank you so much. Trust me, after you become a mother, your phone can never be on silent. How many of you guys agree to that one? Okay, thank you ladies. Thank you for being so patient and thank you for being such a tribe this afternoon. I want to request um, group number one, if they can come up on stage for their pictures, I can request the team here to please clear this. Um, table. I really want to thank each one of you. Make sure that you do not forget to visit all the three experiential zones. And of course, um, you want to sit? Okay, no problem. So, you can't